Welcome back to an instant reaction edition of the Night Report podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. Rich, uh, we're in the midst of a bye week, but unfortunately, some uh, big news broke today. Uh, Tyreen Powell is likely to miss the remainder of the season with a hand injury. He's going to need surgery on a broken hand. Um, we saw him get removed from the game on Saturday. Uh, he never, he didn't come back. His replacement ended up getting that untimely uh, targeting call. Jimmy writes Collins. Um, this is a big blow for this team. He was arguably our best defender. Uh, at, at worst, a top three player on that defense. Just talk about how big of a blow this is to the the defense moving forward. Yeah, um, I feel like we talked about him every week, whether it be the uh, our pod during the week, our post game show, anything like that. And we always mention Tyreen Powell. It's been a phenomenal season for him. I think at one point we were even talking about him potentially leaving early for the NFL next year mm-hmm. because I still think to this point uh, he probably would have been a draft pick. Uh, with the injury, it's a little bit more difficult to gauge, but uh, I, I do think this probably keeps him at Rutgers for another year. If I had to guess, it's just a guess on my point. He, I, there was somebody on the tip of my tongue that he reminded me of, and I couldn't think of it. He reminds me a lot of Tremaine Edmonds, the okay. linebacker who got drafted by the Bills and is mm-hmm. now with the, the Bears. He's just got that length and that sideline to sideline speed. He's mm-hmm. just kind of the prototype. Same way that was kind of the way they described Tremaine Edmonds. He's probably not to the same caliber. Like he's not going to be a first round pick by any means, but that's no. the player that remi- he reminds me of on the field. Yeah, no, and and he's great in coverage. Like no one, mm-hmm. no one really talks about his coverage. He actually came in technically. I want to say as a safety prospect, so to speak, mm-hmm. but he, everyone knew he was going to grow into that linebacker. He came in super lean. Um, some of you yeah, might I think remember. Said as an athlete. Yeah. I don't know if some of you, some people might remember when he came in, he was skinny as hell. And mm-hmm. like, I think there was one off season, whether it be, it wasn't this season. I think it was the off season before that he came into training camp and I was like, who the hell is that guy? And it's like, Oh shit. It's Tommy Pat. Like, wow. He gained a ton of muscle. Um, but yeah. And then it was one of Shiano's first flips, um, from Virginia tech late in the process. Um, one in that 11 day span, he talked about it today actually, because that that little 11 days he had to recruit that 2020 recruiting class has been basically this entire team, at least for this season, between Melton, between him, between Longer Beam. Um, but yeah, no, this is this is a huge blow for Rutgers because yes, there's there's depth there, and and if you look on our uh, on our boards, we have the Q and A from Shiano today, and he he mentions that they have depth at linebacker, and that's where Mo, Mo Ture is probably going to step up, but it's where this depth is going to be tested after those two. Like Jameer Wright Collins has to miss the first half of the Ohio state game automatically. Stupid targeting, targeting penalty. Um, Timmy Hinspeter has been playing. He played a, not a lot, but he played a, a good amount of snaps this past weekend. And then uh, Moses Walker. I, I think you're going to have to see most, more of Moses Walker this week too. This is, I have it on the screen Next now week. for those who are listening. Uh, this is Tyreen Powell when he <clears throat> committed to Rutgers in high school. Mm-hmm. That dude's that dude is <laughs> wiry, and if you look at what he looks like now, it is night and day. He is huge now. Yeah, no, it's like dude's a man now. <laughs> it's, it's wild. <laughs> you could see one of the high school photos too on the sideline, just how skinny he was, and then mm-hmm. it's crazy. Hell of a jump for him, and I, I mean, more credit to Jay Butler. Um, that guy mm-hmm. knows exactly what he's doing. He knows how to develop players, and it's just an unfortunate injury. Um, I do have it pulled up, technically, if, if we want to look at it on here. I know it's on our Twitter, sure. too. Um, pro- probably not going to post it anywhere else, to be honest, but um, where is this? Yeah, so those for for those of you who don't remember exactly when he got hurt, so it was uh, second and six, uh, with two minutes left in the third quarter. Um, it looked like he got sandwiched from what I remember, but we'll watch it here. Yeah, the lineman just falls on him. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right, because there's a clear hole. Look, watch what he does here. He just totally bear hugs him, and then he hip tosses him to the ground. Yeah, and I'm assuming his hand got caught up somewhere in there. Um, mm-hmm. Like, that was a clear hold to me. He had both hands on the back of his nameplate. Here's a better view of it. Watch him just wrap him up. Oh, yeah. Wow. And, of course, no no uh, penalty call there uh, yeah. by these uh, 
exquisite Big Ten referees. <laughs> yeah, they've been great. Uh, sure. Nothing but good things to say week after week about. And yeah. it kind of makes me feel good knowing that other teams are also having huge issues with these refs. Um, so it's just, it just doesn't sound like us being like, you know, whiny babies about it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 tough. It does look like the lineman kind of just falls on him. Um, I'm assuming his hand got caught up somewhere there. Now, I've took the liberty to reach out to um, a hand specialist that I do know. I do know people okay. in the medical field. They said for the most part, and they deal with athletes, um, not not around here or somewhere else, but they do deal with athletes. They basically told me that they would basically just put a cast or a case on it, and um, they just throw them out there for the rest of the year for the most part. And that's how a lot of – you see it now. And NFL players have clubs yeah. and this and that. And for the most part, they would just cast it up and then be like, hey, go play the rest of the year. We'll figure it out after the season. It's a hand injury. So that means this one has to be pretty damn significant for him not to do that. Yeah, I mean, Shiano could be saying hand, and he might actually mean wrist, which is different. Mm -hmm, true. So if you break any of these hands, there are bones in your hand, like you said, uh, mm -hmm. you can just cast it up because you have you have eight bones that connect yeah. to your wrist, and you have your you know metacarpals. Are um, you the hand specialist that I talked to? <laughs> I when I broke, my I didn't foot, know there was I, eight bones in your hand. To be honest, yeah, there's, there's eight bones that connect, like there's these small bones. And if you, you ever like stretch your hand, sometimes yeah. it hurts. That's kind of because they could misalign. Anyway. Uh, but if it's more so the wrist, like the area where the, your um, mm -hmm. these two bones connect to your wrist, to your hand, that could potentially hold them out more. Yeah. Um, so who knows? Uh, yeah. Shiano has said all year about injuries. He's not going to give an update on guys unless they're basically out for the year. So mm -hmm. for him to definitively say he's going to be out for the year probably means that the injury is uh, a little bit worse than just a broken hand or you know, a single finger bro bone mm -hmm. broken or whatever, it, you know, might be. Um, so yeah. the linebacking group has been such a, a shining uh, group all season mm -hmm. between Motore, between Deion Jennings and Tyreen Powell. Who steps up here? Because they've kind of run three linebacker sets all year with, you know, yeah. uh, Motore dropping down for some plays. How? Because, I mean, Tyreen Powell was just so important to this defense him and Deion jennings both mm -hmm. what do they do from here i think you're probably going to go more for two five and i think you're just going to put mo to right at linebacker full time i know he's kind of rotated between edge and linebacker and kind of hell he i think he played on the interior of the defensive line at one point um especially mm -hmm. on third down packages because he's that good of a pass rusher um but that's that's going to probably be put to a halt for now i think you put mo to right at linebacker and you kind of just rock with him and jennings and Obviously, you'll rotate other guys in. I think you'll sprinkle in a little Moses Walker here. You might mm -hmm. sprinkle in a little Jameer Wright Collins when he gets back because he seemed like he was the first linebacker in as soon as Powell got hurt. And then uh, Timmy Hinspeter, he, he played 17 snaps on uh, Saturday. I know, like mm -hmm. I said, the targeting thing kind of screwed everything up. Out of, everything was out of whack at that point. Um, and they just they threw him out there. But he's, he's obviously up there on the depth chart for him to play 17 snaps against a Big Ten opponent, whether it be garbage time or not. Like So... I think two ready to start and you might just kind of try to rock with him and then Jennings for the most part, kind of like what they did last year when they had basically two scholarship linebackers all season. So, yeah, it's we'll a see. bummer. Um, he's, if you could give me a, a list of top five players I don't want to see get hurt in terms of yeah. what, how much they affect the game for Rutgers. He's mm -hmm. definitely on that list. So big loss, but Shiana said, thankfully they have depth so they can, they're better equipped to absorb a loss like this this year than they were last year. Of course. Um, so that's the big news for today. Uh, Shiano did discuss quite a few things at his presser today. What else stood out from you for you today that he said? Um, we talked about his prep during the week um, for, for a bowl week, and he basically said it's like a normal practice. Um, I kind of hinted at that already on the board. Someone asked me what they do. For a bowl and, week or a bye week? A bowl, sorry, bye week. Duh. Um, they, someone did ask him about a bowl game, and <laughs> it's, it's in my head now. But um, he didn't say anything about that for what it's worth. Uh, but, yeah, no, um, he asked about the bye week, he basically said it's like a normal practice week. It's nothing crazy. They, they do kind of focus on Ohio State a little bit. But they really don't get into that until Sunday hits. Once Sunday hits, that's it. Ohio State, Ohio State, Ohio State. But this week, it's kind of like, all right, practice. Make sure guys are getting treatment. Make sure guys are getting healthier. Um, they're still going just as hard in practice. There's no difference between this and last week or the week before or the week before that. Um, 
but uh yeah no it, it's it's the same thing for the most part i know i do know that they will get like one day off probably um he jokingly said that in his presser um he's like man i might give them if they're lucky and just everyone just laughs but uh the uh they are going to go out recruiting on thursday and friday so basically they're going to go to high school games around the country um thursday i'm not sure where they're headed friday i believe i'm not sure who's going whether it be kirk or greg or both maybe uh there will be a coach down at saint francis academy in maryland who's produces like four star four star four star four star four star they will be playing notre dame high school of new jersey in aj serace wow. and Winwich. so yes they've been putting up video game numbers yes i'm updating this um as we speak and i'll have that out later today or tomorrow for the recruit stats for the season but this is their actual first legitimate test to see if these two are as good as advertised. Mind you, they have some big bullies on St. Francis Academy and the Lions. So I don't know how much time AJ is going to have in the pocket, but between him and Gabriel Winowich in that run game, they're both pretty explosive there. So we'll have to, we'll have to see what they can do. It's, it's definitely going to be an interesting one because uh, St. Francis also has a four-star quarterback as well. In uh, yeah. Michael Buren, if some of you might remember. <clears throat> Um, if you take a look at uh, Notre Dame's schedule this year, they're nine and zero. They're undefeated this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the playoffs in New Jersey start soon. I don't know ex- the exact date that they start. I think it's next week, if I'm correct. Um, Two weeks. But I from what I from what I was reading, uh, AJ Serres led a huge comeback last week against Hopeville Valley. Um, they're down by two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, and mm-hmm. AJ Sirius led the team back to win 35-34 to uh, keep the undefeated streak alive. So, um, yeah, big time matchup against uh, an incredible program at St. Francis, who produces, like you <clears> said, so much uh, high level talent. Yeah, just to um, give you a sneak peek of their high level talent, I'm looking at their 2024 class, which is only seniors and no one else. You Maryland want to pop that on back. the screen. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'll make it easier for everyone. Where is that? This is kind of nutty, actually, the more I look at it. <laughs> That's just their 2024 class. And it's a Maryland, a Maryland running back, Oregon quarterback, Michigan State lineman, UMass lineman. Uh, all these guys have Power 5 offers, by the way. Um, uncommitted, Wake Forest, Cincy. Uncommitted, Tennessee, Oregon, uncommitted. Like every single one of these guys has at least that's what fifteen total players wow. in their senior class that have a Power Five offer. Like that's nuts. That's that's just twenty twenty four. It gets, oh, it's it's a it's a crazy school, and they just recruit a ton of dudes. And um, if it ever loads, I have the twenty twenty five up too. But yeah, no, they produce at a high rate, and it's it's actually insane. Look, there's that's their their junior class. It's number ninety in the country, number eighty seven in the country, number thirty in the country. Like it's uh, this is going to wow. be a tough one for them. I, I I don't fault them if they they don't win this one, but we'll see. Big time matchup for them. Uh, yeah, good chance to to scout and recruit a bunch of high level talent at that mm-hmm. game. Um, oh, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure they'll they'll make their faces seen at the St. Francis group as well. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously things slow down a bit during a bye week. We won't have as much content for you guys. We're trying to yeah. think of something to kind of do a season uh, overlook at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe give out some like mid-season MVPs, even though they're kind yeah. of beyond mid-season. Um, but we have some exciting stuff in terms of the sporting calendar. Um, it's another secret scrimmage for basketball this upcoming mm-hmm. weekend against DePaul. Um, we're inching closer and closer to basketball season as well. We're about two weeks out from the first game of the season, November 6th yeah. against Princeton. Uh, I believe if you're a season ticket holder and ordered tickets for that game, I know a lot of people have been kind of annoyed that we haven't gotten those tickets yet. I am too. Mm-hmm. Um, those tickets supposedly are getting sent out today. I got an email saying that your card will be charged. So TBD, uh, but you should be receiving those tickets no later than tomorrow. If you haven't, if you don't get them by tomorrow, I'd say to contact your ticket rep and sorry to the ticket office for, you know, possibly <laughs> pointing a bunch of people to the phones. Um, that's kind of yeah. all I got, though. Not a, oh, my screen just got really blurry. I don't know what happened there. Um, yeah, uh, not really anything else to be said. Um, kind of just waiting. Uh, Alec will have more on Rutgers Women's Basketball Local Media Day that just happened today. 
Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'm trying to think what else. There's really not else, much else going around. Uh, I'm working on a guest. I didn't even tell you this yet. Working on a guest this week that uh, has watched every Rutgers football game to help us break down where they're at this season and what they could be with the next four games coming up. Um, I think we've also talked bowl games already. I don't think there's much more to be said there. Sounds like pinstripe more than anything, but yep. um, someone had them in Vegas. Someone had them. Uh, I forget what the other one was. But uh, cit- citrus? No. Vegas, Detroit, Detroit. Uh, which I don't think anyone wants Nashville, to want. which would be great, but that's not happening. Yeah, you need to win probably eight games to to play in the Music City Bowl. Um, yeah, Maybe which we were kind of kicking around. I don't think it's crazy to, to maybe get two more wins on this schedule. I don't think it's likely, but I don't think it's out of the question either. I think Iowa is really suspect. I think Maryland's a lot worse than we initially thought after the first four or five games. Mm. I don't think there's been a point in the time Rutgers has been in the Big Ten where the gap between Rutgers and Ohio state has been this narrow. And that's, that's the way I want to put it because we're at on the upswing relative to our program. Ohio state is on the slight dip relative to their program. I know they're, you know, seven and O or eight and O whatever they are now ranked three in the country. But think about every year, traditionally Ohio state's had three or four receivers that ended up being first round picks. You got a first round, pick or two on the offensive line you got a top five top 10 drafted quarterback recently mm-hmm. like ohio state's almost always had a stud at quarterback they don't have that this year they got marvin harrison jr who might be the best of all of the ohio state receivers who've been drafted the last decade yeah. but okay. behind that is pretty thin um and they don't really have a great secondary pass catcher they got cade stover who's you know a really good tight end but mm-hmm. typically ohio state think of you know Past few years, they had like Chris Olave. They've had, you know, uh, Garrett Wilson. They've had so many mm-hmm. dudes in that receiver room, and they just don't have that depth right now. Um, so, I think Rutgers they could ch- put a fight against Ohio State. Maryland, I think, could be a possible win. I don't think we're going to beat Penn State and Happy Valley, but Happy they didn't really impress me on Saturday either. No, um, didn't. but they've kind of steamrolled over everyone else. We'll see. I, I, I don't think it's totally out of the question to get two more wins. So I think the bowl destination is very much in the up in the air right now. But the most likely I would agree if you're putting betting favorites on it, it would be the pinstripe bowl. Yeah, no. He- heavy bet on the pinstripe bowl right now, unfortunately. But it's also not unfortunate because they're gonna show up there better than anyone else. The fan base is gonna be packed yeah. there. It's Yankee Stadium. Everyone knows that I would assume most Rutgers fans know their way around that area. Uh, oh, yeah. whether it be as a Yankee fan, a baseball fan in general. Um, the bars are across the street, which is beautiful. I and mean, it's like you get off the subway, you get off the train, you get off your you park, and you're, you're right next to everything. So it's yep. it's just simple and easy for everyone else. Um, Travel-wise, it's nice too. And you play an ACC opponent. I don't know who it's gonna who that would be. There's speculation Boston College. There's speculation NC State. A lot of speculation about NC State for some reason. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean... It's, any, it doesn't matter who it is. It's just it's still a power five opponent at the end of the day, and um, I, I I don't want to say it's the best case scenario because I, I would love Vegas on December twenty third, but it's it's a pretty good scenario. Your bowl yep. game, you're close. You get the money. You don't have to pay for travel. You can do all that, and it's it's simple. Yeah, they certainly wouldn't lose money on a bowl trip to <laughs> Yankee Stadium, yeah. um, which is oftentimes like the thing that people get up in arms about. It's like, oh, you went to a bowl and it cost you three million dollars. It's like well, that's just kind of the the going rate of these things. Not that you'd lose yeah. $3 million. I'm just throwing a number out there. But almost all bowl trips end up in some sort of uh, red on the uh, on the ledger. But that's kind of the way it is. It's a reward. I know you used to get a pretty cool uh, – like, obviously, they give out gifts for every like, mm-hmm. player. You used to get a pretty cool gift basket when it was the new era pinstripe bowl i don't know what you get now mm. since it's a uh, bad boy mowers pinstripe bowl. yeah you get a ride on mower each team hey you know that's in jersey it's not a bad thing <laughs> all right guys uh, well, stay tuned this week we'll have more content we just don't really have a solidified view of what it'll be but mm-hmm. we always have it here for you on the podcast feed we have it for you on the website uh one thing we have our uh our initial um, look ahead for portal uh, players for, for football. 
Every year I put together a speculative list based on some of the top performers at the G5 or FCS level mm -hmm. who have ties either to the Rutgers coaching staff or the region, or they're going to a college in the region. I mean, last year we identified a ton of studs. We identified a Johnny Cornelius, who's the starting tackle for Oregon, uh, the University of Oregon. Mm -hmm. they, we, we identified two quarterbacks who are now starting at the Power 5 level in Christian Valu and uh, Tony Musket, who just led Virginia to a top 10 upset against uh, UNC. We identified Naeem Simmons, who set the single game record for receiving yards at uh, South Florida this year. So we're, we're getting pretty good at picking out potential studs. Um, and I think I found about a, a dozen and a half really good ones to start. Um, so if you're on the, the, the round table, check that out uh, because that's exclusive there. I think you're going to put it into an article soon, but that's the, yeah. the portals heating up. We've mm -hmm. seen a lot of kids enter in the last week or so um, as FCS uh, schedules are winding down because they end a little earlier than FBS. But yeah, so. you got anything you want to close on, Rich? Um, I don't really have anything else. Oh, it's NBA season. Um, mm. I do, do the Raptors play tonight? So we have a several NBA players for the first time in a long time, right? Yep. Can, yeah, it's been so, a while. I, so uh, no one, they don't play tonight, actually. They play, what do they play tomorrow, the Raptors? Raptors, Raptors, Raptors Timberwolves tomorrow at 7.30. Um, Ron is one of the 18 players on the roster. Um, I don't know if he's going to be active or not because he is on a two-way deal still. Um, and they honestly have some decent names on the Raptors, too. Um, Oklahoma City Thunder uh, also play tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Um, neither is on TV, but if you have NBA TV, it's relatively cheap if you don't. I think it's like 100 bucks for the season. I shouldn't say it's relatively cheap, but like 100 bucks for 82 games is pretty worth it. Um, they have Caleb McConnell, obviously, and I feel like I'm missing someone. Am I missing someone? No, that's it, right? Um, Eugene O'Murray. Um, uh, count yeah. him. If you if you want to count him, he I I think uh, Jacob Young's also in the G League. Um, still, I think he's with Memphis, if I believe if I'm correct. Uh, but Eugene is on the Washington Wizards. They play t tomorrow also at seven o'clock against the Pacers. And uh, I don't think any of these games are technically on localish TV. But the Brooklyn Nets are on tomorrow, and we're back. We got Ben Simmons, baby. Oh my gosh! Well, good luck to you because. Uh... <laughs> As a Sixers fan, I've rode that roller coaster uh, far too many times. I'm just nice. so sick of it. If he does well, good, good for him. I, I've cleansed myself of Ben Simmons at this point. Yeah, so I'm just saying, he's he's uh, he looks pretty good in preseason. This is the 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 cycle of cope each off season of being a fan of Ben Simmons' team. He always looks good in the off season. Mm -hmm. He's always got those videos of him shooting. He'll make like three threes in a row. You think it's the yep. year. He's you know looking decisive and aggressive going to the rim. And then the first time the the lights get turned on, he shits himself and oh. he's just there quivering in a puddle of his own excrement, not knowing what to do. So until I see it again, I'll just that's assume he's the same geez. guy. That's yeah. fair. Um, other than that, I think Rutgers baseball had a pretty good scrimmage. It was eighteen innings, yeah. which is weird. But they well, beat they did Vanderbilt. Three, they did three six inning scrimmages against Vanderbilt. Yeah. That's why yeah, they beat Vanderbilt, though, and yeah, I think all three, if I recall. I think the combined score was something like eighteen to six. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's pretty big. That's an SEC program, so we'll, we'll yeah, see one of the Rutgers best programs baseball. in the country. Great showing. Rutgers For baseball sure. is a little bit brewing now. Um, I think that's really it, though. Nothing, nothing else new. All right, guys. Well, thank you once again for listening. Thank you to everybody who has liked, reviewed, subscribed. All the good stuff. If you haven't already, shame, shame. But for me and Richie, this has been another edition of the Network Report Podcast, signing off.